The parent's role in this stage is being a team builder. And that is just that you're not the one handing out all the rules, handing out all of the things, but instead you're there to be a facilitator, a mediator, a guide, a mentor still. Now, instead of just really diving into your relationship with one child, you're really looking at the inner workings of the whole family. Are you ready to challenge traditional notions of parenting and swap it for something that's more effective, a ecosystem that works together where each family member is heard, valued, they each have their own needs met? Well, it really is possible. Sounds kind of like a dream. Anytime we talk about individualizing parenting and not having a cookie cutter approach and one size fits all approach, there is a lot of stress that comes with that of this idea of like, well, I have five kids or there are five of us in the family. How am I supposed to parent every single child differently? And it becomes possible when you create an environment, an ecosystem where everyone is working together to meet each other's needs. So it, it becomes less about parent on kids and having to have five different parenting strategies, and instead it becomes this team approach. So that's why I really like that word lately. Because I think of those like, what are they, aquariums or uh, terrariums? Sure. I think of terrariums, and I think of how all the different life forces that are inside of the terrarium, they work together to create this amazing environment and ecosystem that like a biosphere yeah that too yeah and they they all need each other to survive and they all work with each other to help each other out and you know that's what i think of when i think of a family well <laughs> it's just a clever ruse because i gotta say when we first started out i don't know that i was ready for any of this family ecosystem teamwork team I, building i would agree with that i think that not many of us are raised this way. And, you know, as my background in education, I always believed in a collaborative approach. And when I taught in the classroom, my favorite way to teach was project-based learning, where not just is the teacher saying, hey, we're going to learn about buses this week, or we're going to learn about this country this week. Instead, it's getting the ideas and cultivating an environment where every child wants to learn. And so when I moved into being a parent and we became a family, I really wanted to see if this was possible, where we could work together, where we really could create plans that work for the individuals in our family. So... Are you saying our entire marriage is just one big experiment? I mean, I would say that our family is definitely the guinea pigs for a lot of the things we do on the, you know, with other families. We have to try it out on our family first, and then we end up trying it with a small group, and then our membership, and then our, at large. And it's so cool because, you know, we would never be able to touch this many lives if I had a practice or if I did one-on-one -on -one coaching. But because we've worked online for almost a decade now, we've literally seen hundreds of thousands of families apply these different strategies. And so we can see where, where the holes are and where people struggle. And so I'm excited to kind of dive into this kind of family team approach. But before we do that, can we talk a little bit about what it isn't and what it is? Like what is what's different about this approach than, you know, maybe the way most of us were raised or traditional parenting paradigms? The collaboration piece is unique. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that there's collaboration in a lot of other uh, like ways of thought and, and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But the piece that I love about the framework is that it values your children's opinions just as much as yours. Yeah. And so an example of this, the alternative would be top down. Yeah. So this would be, hey, guys, we're going to start this new chore chart 
or, hey guys, we're going to try this new way of spending and saving our money. Or, hey, I learned about this new morning routine and we're going to do this new way of doing morning routines or this new electronic routine or whatever it is. But the decision comes from the parents and many of the approaches talk about the parents being a team, but then you hand down the approach to the children and you are the one in charge. You are the one on top. And, and this is less about that. This is, you know, building off of the last episode, we talked a lot about the difference between being a disciplinarian and being a guide and a mentor. And this just builds on that stage. This is, you know, that fifth stage in our roadmap. And over the last five episodes, we've been talking about each of the five stages of our Calm the Chaos Roadmap. And this is like that end destination where your family works together like a team and all the voices are heard and you actually enjoy spending time together, but you don't get there by jumping into the deep end and starting here. You actually have to start at those earlier stages And so if you haven't yet, if this is the first episode you're jumping in at, I would highly encourage you to go back to the beginning, listen to those beginning episodes because they do all build up to here. And we dive deep into these in our Calm the Chaos book and in our Calm the Chaos program, we go step by step in all of this. So that brings us back to stage five, which is family success. Well, what's amazing is you know, when you were sort of like queuing me up for that last question, uh, you like pointed at the graphic that you were wanting me to talk on. And I completely ignored that. I was like, why is she pointing at that? And then <laughs> I just said something from my heart. And then it actually was the thing that you were pointing at. So it is, like, it is. yeah, yeah, I got it. Yeah, you did. That's one of one of the differences. We have these great doodles laid out that we are going to be sharing in the YouTube. Um, But those of you that are listening on podcast, this is the benefit of looking at our show notes, going over to the YouTube channel, liking, subscribing, because we have great visuals. The team does a great job of putting together the videos. I think they're kind of fun to watch. Let's talk about just the stage, because that's how we start most of these episodes. So At this stage, we each have a role, and the parent's role in this stage is being a team builder. And that is just that you're not the one, you know, handing out all the rules, handing out all of the things, but instead you're there to be a facilitator, a mediator, a facilitator, a guide, a mentor still, and you're you're kind of growing your team and you're helping navigate and manufacture some of these interactions like we talked about last time, and it just builds on itself so that now instead of just really diving into your relationship with one child, you're really looking at the inner workings of the whole family. And I don't know how many of you guys out there, you know, are like maybe in a managerial position or maybe you own your own uh, business, but like it's exhausting managing people. And when you can build the team up to like download your thinking, right, the company or like the, the family starts to like run itself as opposed to always coming to you for answers. Yeah, this is this is about being a team leader versus a manager. That is such a good distinction because it really is teaching our whole family how to think, not what to think. It's teaching our family how to understand each other. You're basically at this stage, you're expanding the Calm the Chaos framework, which just to review is you connect, understand, empower. You're now expanding that to the whole family and you're teaching them the, the framework and how to apply that in different situations. I think what what I'm trying to say is like when you can explain your thinking, when you can like lay it out, even the things that you think everyone understands and when they're like laid out there, it it really solves problems. Yeah. Uh, I was speaking to someone the other day and they've been having struggles with getting their kid out the door in the morning. Mm -hmm. And the thing that is unlocked getting out the door in the morning was to explicitly say, I need you downstairs by 8 a.m. (laughs) <laughs> that was it. And like that just, was it. Yeah. I think a lot of times we keep our thoughts in our head and we assume that our kids know what we're thinking or know what we're saying. And even when we explicitly say what we need, sometimes we assume they understand or they've processed what we say. Like when we say clean your room and to our teenager, 
He's like, I like my room the way it is, but there are like plates on his bed. There's all kinds of stuff, you know, all over the place. And he's like, it is clean to him. And so, you know, just because we say this one thing, it's it's about breaking it down a little further and helping our kids and our spouses understand where we're coming from. We say that kind of the goal of this stage is to have that empowered family, mm-hmm. right, who spends time together, has fun together, right, supports each other. The last couple of weeks, I feel like we've had a slowdown in, in the business side of things. We're kind of like slowing down to speed up as we go into like the, the launch of the book and getting everyone really excited there. And hint, hint, pre-order your book <laughs> if you haven't already. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But... You know, we've been focusing a little bit more on the family Mm -hmm. uh, and this weekend in particular, um, you know, we've got teenagers. They just kind of want to be by themselves and do their own thing. Uh, But the teenagers have been talking to us and coming down and hanging out, Um, you know, our 10 year old hanging out with us. You know, having There was a moment the other night. I just want everyone to kind of picture this moment. And you will know when I describe this, if this is something that is normal in your house or if it's something that you would like to have in your house. But the other night we were sitting, it was like eight o'clock at night on a weekend and our two other kids were doing their thing. They had both come down, they both talked to us, our teenagers, like you said, they had both come down, they had both talked to us. They had both asked us about what we were doing. So we were all sitting at the kitchen table, Um, the 10 year old, myself, And Jason, we had just gone on an adventure of the day and we had gone to Michael's and all of us had gotten different crafts that we like. I'm working on um, a really cool like knitting um, experiment. (laughs) I think it's an experiment, but a knitting project from my friend at Knit Collage. Um, And and so I'm trying this new thing. My daughter got some new drawings that she could try and she was trying to crochet because she's been watching me knit. And then Jason was sitting beside us and he was coloring in his new coloring book. And it was just so quiet. And we were just talking about anything and everything that came up. And then, you know, the teenagers would come down and grab their food. And then they'd be like, oh, what are you doing? Oh, that looks interesting. Oh, that's really cool. And our oldest, who just graduated high school, started talking about maybe some classes he wants to take if, you know, how we could find a forge so he could try to do, um, you know, some weaponry. He's really fascinated in like old swords and he would love to find a forge to learn how to do that. So we just had these great conversations. I just stopped for a moment and I was like, wow, there was a moment I never thought we'd ever get here. Sure. And it and it wasn't like, oh, let's go to Disney World and let's have this idyllic Pinterest perfect vacation. It was literally just Saturday night, but was everyone was super connected. So peaceful, so connected. And I don't like to say like peaceful, connected families, but that's what it was. It was like this <laughs> idyllic like evening where everyone was getting along and everyone was doing something that lit them up and it just was it was really cool and that's what this stage is all about and it's making those moments more common where this is just a way of life a way of being a way of doing a way of living and So that's why I'm really excited to tell you guys about this. Now, if you heard me tell this story and you're like, yeah, right. Like someone would have thrown the pencil. Someone would have spilled something on there. It would have been a fight in the other room. If we just rewind a couple of years. And that's actually what I was thinking is because we have some students in our, in our membership and they'll, they'll share, especially on a really bad day, we call it setting a timer and they'll share and they'll say like, I, you know, the ba- the kids woke the baby up from the nap and I didn't get to eat and I couldn't even make my food without them throwing things. And then the kid locked himself in the bathroom and that was going through my head when I was sitting there at this table going, this is why I do what I do is because I know it's possible for families that are living in utter chaos and stress and And just that feeling of defeat, I know it's possible to not live in that anymore because we used to have that situation. And so I know that it's possible. I have, you know, you can't see it here, but, you know, I am 
this wall is covered. You can see a couple behind me over here, maybe in the YouTube. Um, I'll pull one up. But we um, have a whole wall of families who have this as their day-to-day. -day. This is what life is like, who have reached this family team stage of parenting. And it really is just... You know, there's nothing magical about it. It is a lot of hard work, a lot of peaks and valleys to get here, but I want you to know it is possible and you are not alone in whatever you're dealing with to get here. So are you ready to like dive in and kind of talk about what exactly the difference is and, um, and how to do it, how to create a family success plan? I think so. Okay. So let's talk a little bit again about the difference between family team approach and what a family team is versus traditional parenting environments. You know, the first thing that we talk about in the book, you know, with family team is, right, in sort of the traditional model, right, everyone's kind of like the same, mm -hmm. right? Whereas in the calm the chaos model, right, there is individuality, yes. right? Everyone's unique needs and profiles are accounted for right well and it's it's that idea that you know everyone should have the same rules everyone should get the same treatment and every just because brother has this then sister should get that and that is where we're veering off from traditional parenting here and we're saying no everyone doesn't have to have the same everyone doesn't have to have the same bedtime everyone doesn't have to have the same phone rules like that I, I was just thinking like we literally have three different bedtimes we have three different like electronics rules for everyone like, our kids have... go to three different schools and not just because <laughs> they're high school middle school and elementary like they go to two like our high schoolers went to two very different schools because they needed different types of schooling uh, at one point we had one kid being homeschooled and one going to public school. So this really is about individualizing the way that you operate based on what each person in the family needs. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we talked about this next piece a little bit already, but you know, in the traditional model, it's very much parents are dictating the rules on high. It's a top-down approach, whereas calm the chaos mm -hmm is a collaborative way. Yeah, and that can even, this is one of the traps we see all parents fall into because it could be in a very positive way. And it could be that you got input. You could say, hey, we're gonna start a new routine. Would you like this or this? But that that's just scratching the surface on how collaborative you can actually be as a family. I think you can go so much deeper in the level of collaboration, meaning, you know, I was listening to a podcast the other day and I heard the amazing Brene Brown talk about being a family first family. And it just lit me up because she talked about her example she gave. I was like, yes, this is what we talk about. But she gave an example about how they don't make any decisions without bringing it to the team. And so that means if someone wants to start an extracurricular activity, they say, all right, how's that going to ripple effect into the rest of the family? And then if she's going to go on a book tour, she goes, okay, well, what's a four-week book tour going to do to the family versus a two-week book tour? And it's not just like the kids have to collaborate on what and make sacrifices, but the parents are also saying, okay, let's look at how we want to do this. And we did it today. It's a holiday here where we're recording today. And we had the full day scheduled to, you know, record and do different things. And we just stopped and we took kind of a, a kind of a, a feel for what does the family want or need to do today. And we made adjustments based on that. I think you should talk about this next piece. Yeah. So the next one is in traditional parenting, it's kind of like these unilateral rules. And we kind of talked about that with the same and individualized, but it's it's very much the same. But instead of the what I want you to think of is with same and individual is that you might have this like everyone runs on the same schedule. Everyone runs on the same routine versus there's individualized. Whereas like unilateral versus varied means that instead of we go down this path, this is what we do. In this family, we treat kids kindly, right? And and there's there's something to that piece. But 
you might have a child who wants nothing more than to treat others kindly, but doesn't know how yet. And so just saying, in this family, we treat people kindly, isn't going to be enough for that child. So you're going to have to vary your approach. You might have to adjust the way you get to the end destination. And things might just have to look a little different for one child than for another child. Okay, so the next piece uh, is just the idea is in the old way, the children didn't really have a voice. No, right? it was do as I say. Do as I say, right? Better seen than heard type of nonsense. Oh, 100%. Uh, and, I was always in trouble for talking back. Always. That was like my biggest thing that I got grounded for was talking back. What was it in the, the magic one, two, three? Smart mouth. Smart mouth. Yeah, you got yeah. smart mouth. Smart mouth. Talking back, being sassy, being rude, right? Um, and I think, I actually think that this this is where most parents say my kids have no respect because they grew up with this idea that kids should just do what you ask and they shouldn't say, yeah, but they shouldn't say, but how they shouldn't say, I don't want to. But if in in family team approach, while they're children, while they're in our care, while they're in a trusted relationship is exactly the time we should be teaching children how to push against boundaries and authority in a way that other people can hear them. Yeah. And so I don't want to raise a child who blindly complies to everything I tell them to do because I don't want our 10-year-old to grow up and have a relationship where she blindly complies with the person she becomes in a relationship with. I don't want our children to get into a job and blindly comply and end up doing things that are against their values or against their, you know, what they, their core belief system. I want them to be able to stand up for what they believe is right. But I also want to teach them when and where and how to be able to communicate those differences. Yeah. And for me, it kind of comes down to alignment, right? Like when you feel good and, you know, there's a situation that, hey, I need you to do this and it feels good, it is usually not a problem to take care of that. And when you are out of alignment and someone's like, hey, can you do this? And you're like, I don't feel good about this. I don't want to do this, right? And then you're forced to do it anyways. Like you're kind of just like punching that hole a little bit bigger and you're just asking somebody to not be who they are. Yeah. And I find that this is one of the biggest like tears or rips or holes in relationships and families is that, you know, they, they feel like there's this big, huge leap to parenting in this new approach, in this out-of-the-box way, when really it's just, you've said it in so many episodes, but it's treating each family member like they are human and realizing that while they are part of the family, while they are our children, while they are growing and developing, is the best time in the world to teach them the skills they need to communicate, the skills they need to navigate challenging situations, and the skills they need to understand themselves and others and have that compassion. And that is what we are really focusing on in the last stage where we were talking about getting ahead of things, and then in this stage with family success. So I think we've kind of talked ad nauseum about what family team is, what it's not, and why we should make this shift. Um, so do you want to talk about the family success plan? Sure. Okay. So family success plan is really, really fun to me. It's one of my favorite plans, but I want to add a little caveat. If you've been listening and you just jumped in on this one and you're like, whoa, this sounds like a lot of work. This sounds like a lot of pieces. Well, I want you to know that the family success plan is actually built from all the other stages. So you actually start kind of combining and you know, curating all the plans you've made up till now, and they become your family's operating system. Like, this is your operating manual. You're able to, like, hand this to grandma or grandpa. You're able to hand this to a babysitter. We actually have, when we went on vacation for the first time by ourselves in almost 10 years, 
we went for our anniversary for, last for year. For longer than a day or two. Yeah, for longer than a day or two um, with all three kids still at home. Yeah. Because that was the key. And that's the caveat is all three of them were gone. All three they of them. They weren't with like BioDad or whatever. Yeah, we didn't split them up. All three of them just, you know, your parents took them. And we handed them a family success plan. That was pretty cool. That was really, really cool. So we kind of, you know. Teacher became the student in that moment. It was kind of fun to like go back and try to craft our family success plan, but it was so easy because we had already done all the work. <laughs> well, what was amazing is we we kept not doing it and it kept being on our list. So then I ended up doing it in the middle of the night and then went to bed. And then she woke up and did it first thing in the morning and didn't realize that I had already done it. But the difference in the two versions yeah. was amazing because we're completely different humans who have yeah. completely different interpretations and perceptions mine and priorities. Mine was doodles and mine was <laughs> about the schedules. But like mine was more of like when this, this happens and when this, this happens. And if this, do this. And like it was ways to make sure that Elijah is successful, ways to make sure that Flora is success- successful. Um, if Flora refuses school, here are the steps. I take, you know, and like, here are the prompts I use. Here are the scripts I use. So um, it was very much like an operating manual in like just my relationship with the kids. And yours was very much like, do, 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 like very much the logical stuff of like the kids eat at this time. (laughs) They go to the ballet at this time. They take these meds at this time. You know, yours was, you know, this is bedtime. This is, you know, when I wake them up, yours was very specific to the inner workings of the schedule and the routine, which is just like so funny because of how different we are. It like, it really highlighted our superpowers. So high level, the family success plan is you connect, understand, empower, just like all the plans we have. And the you piece here is one of the most powerful you pieces that we have in the entire roadmap. Um, And it's the struggle to superpower swamp. And it is, we'll go uh, deeper into that in just a second. I want to kind of give all four this time. So we've got the struggle to superpower swap, which is really just being able to see the whole child you have, the whole spouse you have, everyone in the family being able to see two sides of the same coin. The next one is connection. And for connection, we're really working on building that family team. So we're doing really small, sometimes a little silly exercises to really come together and create that unity as a family. The next one is for understand. This is one of my favorite understand pieces. And it's something called a unique profile. And this is where we're kind of making a cheat sheet for each person. And this page, it literally is a page in a notebook, sometimes more than one. And it just explains the inner workings of what you've discovered about each person in the family. So what makes them successful? What are their primary stress responses? What are their sensory preferences? I mean, you can add so much here that helps each family member really truly understand the other family members. And then finally, the last one is probably the the hardest shift for most people. And that is for the empowerment piece, instead of having rules and limits and boundaries and all this to create structure, which we know Kids need structure. Families need structure. We all need structure. My ADHD brain needs structure, right? But I don't need someone else to hand it down to me. I need to create it. And it needs to be based on values that I can align with and that I understand. And so this empowerment piece is about creating value-based family systems. And we can go into some of those, but it's kind of these systems that help your family run like clockwork. Yeah. And for me, you know, the value-based family systems are about creating unity and oneness with the family as opposed to restriction and separate and different, you know, it's just creating that really bonded, connected, yeah, like work together family. Yeah. Structure should not pull us apart. No. Structure should actually bring us together instead of being used as this barrier to being successful. Yeah. And I think sometimes traditional structure 
leaves a lot of kids, especially the most challenging kids, feeling like somehow they're bad or broken or something must be wrong with them because they can't fit within that box, that mold, that structure. Yeah. And, and I'm a super smart guy. I'm very creative. I want to find solutions that bring us together, build us up, as opposed to break us down yeah. and drive us apart. Yeah, that's really well said. I love that. All right, now, I don't know that we can go dive deep into every single one of these because I think every single one of these could probably be an episode. Well, here's what came up while you were talking okay. to me about it. Right. So we talked about how we made this glorious plan and then we hand it to my parents. But what we didn't talk about is what the hell they did with it. Okay. So what came up for me was, you know, we left uh, not only just for the seven days uh, that we were supposed to be gone. Oh, my God. You're going to tell the story. <laughs> I'm not telling the whole story. But oh, in addition. Guys, this was awful. It's like your worst nightmare as a, as a parent that you, like, finally get this trip. You finally leave. You finally get away. And then what Okay, happened? so... <laughs> Uh, we were uh, we were in Sedona, Arizona, and uh, the night before we left, uh, I wasn't feeling so hot. I woke up in the morning. I was super like dehydrated and out of it, um, and we had to make the drive back from Sedona to Phoenix. And I was not feeling good, right? Like, okay, you know he's not feeling good when he has me driving, <laughs> right? Because this guy does not let me ever drive. And he was like, you need to drive. I was like, uh-oh, we got problems. Yeah, so <laughs> uh, we ended up getting to the airport. We stopped to, like, refill the gas. And I said to Dana, we need to go to the hospital, right? Yeah. Like, I don't feel right. Something's wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it ended up being just dehydration from, you know, being in the elevation of Sedona plus yeah. just in the hot sun. It was altitude plus dehydration. And then plus there was, like, some... Some kind of there, bug or whatever. Okay. I, there was also some inner child work that happened while we were in Sedona. <laughs> and so there was also this like, um, like inner child panic attack type thing that was happening. Sure. Why not? Like so, it, it was the well, whole yeah. extent because you, you've never, uh, there was one other time in our entire relationship that you've ever been this panicked. And it was when we were flying home from Cozumel, or I mean, not from Cozumel, from Costa Rica. And you got really sick in the plane again altitude and dehydration and then it brought on also this panic well i mean this is really turning into a strange episode i mean i don't i could explain why no, no, i no. blacked out no. in costa rica no, no 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 but i'm just saying like there was a lot going on here i don't know why i decided to share me you don't i don't want to tell the story you were telling the whole thing so you don't normally what i'm trying to say is because i understand your unique profile it is very unlike you to have a panic attack is what I'm trying to say. And there was a lot of panic and a lot of nerves and a lot of stress here, which then up rippled into some of the decisions we made. So we went to the hospital and then we ended up not leaving and not being able to come back home for almost a whole nother week. Yeah. And uh, as I was like, I'm in the hospital, I'm waiting. They ended up just giving me like fluids and an IV uh, and I got another IV treatment, uh, like at the place we were staying yeah. a couple days later, um, to sort of like pump me back up. Uh, I was like, no, it's fine. Like my parents are there. They're going to take care of the kids. You know, they're, they're both, you know, retired right now. Um, they're not working. It's okay. They're going to take care of us. And, you know, like the day that we were supposed to come back, they're like, well, we're going to Florida. See you later. You're like. We're outie. See like, what you what later. Do you, what do you mean? Like, I can't, you know, I so can't then, get back. Then they just hand over the kids to our sitter, who obviously knows our kids, but she's never had all three of them. Yeah, and she had them for a week. So we had this sort of back-to-back -back exchange, and what could have been just a nightmare situation worked out really well. So let's bring it all the way back to the to original the, point. To the of, plan. We gave them this family success plan and handed it to them. And nearly every time I talked to them, they were like, oh, well, I just turned to page 32 and I saw that when this happens, this happens. Right. And 
the very like they had all the things. They had their refusal to turn off electronics, but they only had it one night because there was a plan for what to do when Elijah refuses to get off electronics. Well, what happened is the first night they made a mistake and they didn't kind of like let him know, hey, it's time to switch you know, from what you're doing to the next activity. He was on, he was on his games instead of switching to his and YouTube. And the game never ends and yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. yada, yada. Which so, is all in the plan because we know that. Yeah, there was an exact paragraph for this scenario in the <laughs> in the plan. So not only did he look at the plan and be like, oh, okay, cool. This is what I did wrong. This, this is like my, my dad taking responsibility for his piece in this. Uh, afterwards, uh, our oldest and our middle had a huddle about why it didn't go well. And then after they huddled together, uh, my oldest went back to my dad and said, hey, this is where it went wrong. I'm really sorry. It wasn't about getting off. I just didn't know where to save and I couldn't stop. And then a new monster came out and I tried to deal yeah. with him. It was just- he and like, this is how my brain works and this is what I need. And so, you know, from now on, can you uh, have me not get on? I won't do electro, I won't do- games at the end of the night will switch to YouTube. Can you remind me? And, and they didn't have another problem the rest of the time. Yeah. Which is pretty stellar. Yeah. Right. And then on the flip side, my mom, who is more the structure and routine of like, let's get the things done, really loved my piece of it, which had all the stuff that she needed to do during the day to keep the, like the operations portion of the show running. Yeah. Uh, so it just it just it turned out to be this brilliant thing to help them have a successful vacation with their grandkids yeah. instead of stressing out and tearing their own hair out and yeah. then being like, we we need to get the hell out of here. They left because they felt 100 percent comfortable. They even called um, our, our sitter for like reinforcements sometimes. They're like, hey, can you still come and help with the food or can you help with the things that she normally does for us? Mm -hmm. uh, so it just really was like, yeah. it was like extended family team it was, almost. It was so beautiful. And it was just really nice because they do have different parenting styles than us and they are the most loving and amazing grandparents. Um, but it's funny because as his mom- I hope has, they're watching right now. Yeah, right? Here comes all the love. As- <laughs> His mom has grown older. She does things she never did with you growing up. And so it's so funny because it was nice to have something in here because I know that there's some languaging sometimes that comes out of like, you know, don't act like that with grandma, you know, and and so it was really nice for her to know, hey, you can expect this to happen and it's not about you, right? Those were really huge pieces for them. Hey, you can expect this to happen and know that he's not doing it because he's being disrespectful. Or if this word comes out of his mouth, it means like he's he's spiraling, right? And so they knew what to watch for. They knew exactly how to navigate even the most challenging situations and and they dealt with the biggest blow, which is that we just didn't come home. <laughs> so, it's, it's a grandparent's worst nightmare. It is like a grandparent's <laughs> worst nightmare. I think it was mine too. It was a little stressful. I'll be real honest. I think the, the biggest takeaway that I hope that you are getting from this episode, because it was a lot of like us talking about things and, and, and not giving up. Wait, 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 wait. The podcast where we talk for like 30 yeah, minutes but it, I was like, talking. I feel like this one wasn't as like, oh, it was a lot of talking. here's info base, <laughs> like here's information that you can take and do something with. I feel like there wasn't as much teaching. And I feel like in the last few episodes, we've given some teaching. And at one point we were like, we're always going to leave you with a teeny tiny action step. And then like the last three episodes, we've not given any teeny tiny action step. What are you talking about? What are their tiny action steps? When did we agree that we were giving teeny tiny like action steps? Like episode two. And then we stopped doing it. Okay. Well, then it didn't work. It's wrong. Maybe I, we need to have a huddle about this. Maybe we need to have a huddle. We need a podcast success plan. Oh, my gosh. We do need a podcast success plan. Okay. Okay. So here's, here's what I want you to take away from this episode is that if you're struggling to get your kids to listen, you're struggling to get your kids to follow instructions, you're struggling to get your kids to get along, it could be that you need a radically different approach to parenting. And not that you're doing everything wrong, you're doing everything you've been taught to do up until this point. But this is a huge paradigm shift of 
instead of the parents being in charge and the ones that make all the rules, you're creating a team that is collaborative, that's learning together, that's working together, that's creating systems together. And what comes out of that truly is the most beautiful thing that I've ever seen when families start working together, when kids start recognizing why their sister is upset, or when, you know, another sibling starts recognizing when dad is getting triggered. Like there are just some really cool things that happen. And so, you know, if you have any kind of doubts I would encourage you to pick up a copy of the Calm the Chaos book. We go through this step by baby step by baby step, and we dive into every single piece of the whole roadmap leading up to the family success plan, and it definitely fits together better when you have the whole thing, and then 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 suspend that judgment, you know, while you're going through it and and test out these, these theories and these concepts because we have seen the evidence that it works. Yeah. And I think my, my biggest takeaway as we've been talking, you know, just from the last couple of minutes is, you know, we have this sort of mantra in our society that you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Mm. Right. And I know that for a fact that that's not true. Right. So, you know, in this story, in this scenario, right, kudos to my parents for embracing change, mm-hmm. embracing a different way of thinking. Well, kudos right? to you. Like when we started heading into this, like you didn't want to uh, embrace this way of parenting. <laughs> well, kudos to you. Kudos to you. What a weird thing to say to somebody. You just said kudos to your parents. Why you is it directly not- say kudos? To, like, well, kudos to you. Well, it's such a weird like I don't know this is another does Dana win or Jason wins I think I win because you totally said kudos to my parents and so I said kudos to you like I literally just reciprocated the thing you just said I I don't understand so kudos (laughs) to everybody that I know because they're all amazing and that's the point right was when we can embrace our uniqueness Mm -hmm. when we can provide the structure the needs all the sensory profiles right all the stuff that we've been talking about in the family success plan when we can do that and navigate it successfully we all have space to become ourselves to be ourselves to flourish to feel safe Right. And to enjoy our own lives without Mm -hmm. that fear of judgment and that anxiety of what happens when. Right. Because, you know, that your your family has your back. I love that so much. And just one last note. um, And then I, I swear we're wrapping up. One last note is all of this can sound great in theory, but when you try to put it into practice, it can feel like maybe something's wrong with you because you can't get it to work. And there's two things to that. One is that change takes time. And so it's about taking just baby steps, one step at a time. And two is that there is research that shows that you only have to get parenting 70% right. I don't know about you. I'm I'm a C student. I can do that. Like I can get parenting 70% right. And then you just help your kids understand the other 30%. And so no one's here actually assessing you, right? So if you get a 60 or a 50, it doesn't matter, right? But the fact that you're listening to this and the fact that you're trying and the fact that you're you're trying new things and you're open and you're you're constantly wanting to have a better relationship with your kids, then you're you're winning. You're doing what you need to do and there is no better person to parent your kid than you. And you're not failing and your kid's not broken. And so with that, I do want to just remind you that this is that last stage in the roadmap. And in our prior episodes, we've walked you through the other five stages in the roadmap in our book. We also dive deep into each of the stages one step at a time. And in the future episodes, what we're going to be doing is kind of diving into some of the most common questions that we're getting, some of you know, some specific situations like sibling rivalry or getting kids off of electronics or what do you do when, um, 
you know, when a kid won't go to bed, right? Very specific situations. We can also talk about, we've been thinking about talking about our, more about our journey. Um, my journey as an ADH adult who was raised in the 80s, completely undiagnosed, um, and our journey with autism, with our, um, our journey with parenting and co-parenting and um, divorce and all those things. So we've got lots of great ideas and series coming up. And so we really hope that this has given you a really good taste of the Calm the Chaos framework. And we hope that you will follow and you will continue to let us know what you think of these episodes. And we will see you in the next episode. Don't forget, you have got this.